Hello and uh, welcome to my talk, Performance Does Matter. My name is Omri and I'm so excited to be here today uh, at my home, broadcasting to you uh, from Tel Aviv, Israel, uh, talking to you virtually and being able to communicate with you even though we have this uh, corona crisis. Um, honestly, I would prefer to fly to Poland, meet all of you in the conference. But anyway, I hope everyone are happy and safe home. Um, so before I start a little bit about myself, I'm currently leading the mobile platform at Wix. Um, I originally came from iOS background and today I'm mostly around React Native applications uh, focused on architecture and performance. Uh, you can find me on Twitter on, at Omuri uh, And today I'm going to talk about uh, how to improve your app performance. Uh, which if you don't know yet, it's uh, affect your uh, rating and revenues of the application and your business. Uh, I will share some tricks and React Native feature we are using uh, at Wix uh, in our mobile application uh, to improve the experience for our users. Uh, keep in mind that most of the principles I will present today are relevant uh, uh, for all mobile applications, not specifically for React Native, but the practical example that I'm going to show is uh, about React Native. Um, so let's jump in. I want to start with a few motivation slides before we are going to dive deep uh, technically. Uh, so did you know that according to a re research uh, conducted uh, two years ago, um, every 1% decrease in startup time can increase your app visitation retention by 0.27% it basically sounds like a small number, but 20% increase in your application startup time with application of 1 million users can increase your retention by 5,000 people. It's amazing. Uh, we can actually say that when a mobile application performance doesn't meet the user expectation, there are a very high chance to, to abandon the application, resulting in loss of potential revenue. Another fact that is even more interesting research is a measurement of level of stress in our daily routine uh, compared between uh, solving a math problem, uh, waiting in line in the store, or waiting for a screen in our mobile application to be loaded. So apparently mobile delays make us more stress than watching a horror movie. You understand our user feels so much frustration when they need to wait for something so a few things we need to keep in mind we are talking about uh, performance in uh, mobile applications first we want the the users to come back uh, to come back to the application open a, the open application again and again every day and spend their money on us uh, the second one we, we want to give our user a slick experience uh, the application should feel good in their hand we should give them a holistic experience of the application um, we want our, our upload fast, as fast as possible. No one want to wait 10 seconds for an application to load. They will simply tap on the home button in iOS or back button in Android and continue with the day, uh, not waiting for the app to be loaded. And we need to remember that it doesn't matter if the app works great on my device. Uh, the best um, the best the best device in the market that you bought with two thousand dollars, the I iPhone 19 Pro Max Extra, I don't know what, but it's important that to, to understand that your application should work well on your user devices, and you should measure your application performance in production for all of your users. Uh, we'll go and uh, talk about it in the third part of the talk. So. In our case, in weeks, we analyzed the user base and it resolved this spreadsheet, which basically say that 35% of our user base use more than two years old device. And it's super important to understand that if we are working on React Native application, because JavaScript engine work different on each device, even if it's fast device or old device, it means that the animation won't be slick as you see it in the simulator and the app may feel much more slower on iPhone 6 uh, and not like uh, running on the simulator or on your personal iPhone X. Uh, so let's start. I decided to split my talk to three parts. 
First, we are going to talk about the infrastructure improvements. Um, do it once and it, it will improve your application performance all over. Uh, the second one is code optimization. It's kind of a cheat sheet to print and put on your desktop uh, in order to remember uh, when you are coding in React Native applications. And the third part is going, I'm going to talk about tools and monitoring. Uh, I'm going to share some tools uh, we develop in Wix or there are community tools uh, to measure the application performance. So let's start. Um, let's start from the obvious and talk about Hermes. Uh, if for some reason you stall, don't do not follow me on Twitter and saw the amazing improvement in Wix application, and you didn't hear about the new JavaScript engine Facebook released last year, you should definitely start using Hermes and stop using JS Core in your Android uh, uh, devices. Um, JavaScript Core is a JavaScript engine which is not optimized for mobile application. On Facebook, they decided to use it only because it's kind of the only one that was exist back then. Um, it doesn't work well on Android and, and now we have Hermes. So why to use Hermes? Faster uh, app launches, fast interaction, lower memory consumption. Um, you can saw, you can see that in our case in Wix, it, it's, it's kind of improvement of, uh, we saw an up startup improvement up to uh, 50% uh, in specific devices. Um, so if you are starting a new React Native application, it's not a question. You should definitely use Hermes. Saying that, uh, it's not easy uh, to migrate your existing uh, big application code base to Hermes uh, for two reasons. Uh, it doesn't support INTL API yet and missing some ES7 features. So I want to give you two tips uh, in case you are struggling with upgrading to Hermes. Uh, First, uh, the INTL support, um, we use uh, an alternative polyfill. You can use Format.js uh, polyfill, or you can use globalized library, which give you most of the feature that you have in INTL with all the languages. Uh, and keep in mind that Hermes team is, has a future plan to support uh, INTL. They are currently working it with their community. Um, the second one is proxy. In our case, in the Wix application, we was heavily dependent on proxy. Uh, so happy, happy to say that Hermes actually supports it, but not officially. You can use Hermes engine uh, uh, version point uh, RC1 uh, and point uh, for two RC5 uh, uh, for React Native 63 or 42 uh, um, 4.2 for React Native 63 uh, 2, uh, and it has proxy support. It's not officially uh, documented, but you can use it. We use it in production. Um, and, and about other ES6, 7 features that are not supported, just remove them from your code. It's worth it. You don't need the object uh, evolve and stuff. Uh, just remove from the code and start using Hermes. Uh, so this is about Hermes, a new JavaScript engine. It's worth to mention that Hermes uh, is the officially recommended JavaScript engine by Facebook, but it's not the only one. Uh, V8 is also an option uh, and actually experimental uh, by, uh, by Kudu. Uh, JavaScript, V8 is a JavaScript engine by Google uh, and Kudu is also a speaker here in React Native EU and he made a POC and I hope he's going to talk about it in his talk. Um, yeah, so keep posted. Um, so, Let's continue um, to the second principle. Um, I don't know how many of you watch your bundle file, but I will really encourage you to do so. Uh, just run React Native Bundle Visualizer and you will get a nice HTML file that you can play uh, and found interesting things and didn't know you are using uh, and library you didn't know that there exist. Um, in our case, uh, in Wix, this is the bundle size. Uh, you can see it is all, almost uh, 21 megabytes. Um, and when we drill in and analyze the bundle, um, we found out the biggest library in our code base, 15% 15 of the whole code base is no longer in use. It was a library uh, that came into the bundle because of a small require in the code someone uh, forgot to move from its library when he stopped using this library. Um, so we need to uh, understand what's going on in the application. In another example, we saw Moment, uh, the, the date library is pretty big library, uh, Moment and uh, Moment Dime Zone. 
And the only usage of this library in our case, in Wix, uh, it was to calculate it that's diff and some other simple operation that can be achieved by kind of a, a 10 kilobyte library called DayJS. So for the second principle, we need to reduce the bundle size, uh, both for iOS and Android. And why? Because it's a give a small, a smaller application size and faster uh, startup time. Um, the Gandhi bundle size, we want to keep it as small as possible. Um, Moment is really awesome package, for example, and that we talked about. It's easy to use and it's pretty useful and powerful. It was my favorite phone handling dates since my very beginning of my web development career, but it's really big. Uh, it, its core or format is only 52 kilobytes, but for some reason, uh, it imports all the local file at once. It's not modulized. Uh, so you carry around all around languages, locale files in the app. I don't want it. Uh, so let's get rid of this kind of library. Uh, you can use alternative for moment. Uh, you need to start by analyzing your bundle. Use only what you need. Uh, remove duplication. Try to use modulized packages. You can see in the example of the slide that instead of import all moment library or all, all, all UI lib, uh, React Native UI lib, you should import specific components that you're using. Example, if you're using a view, text, and button, and not bring all the library because it's going to be inside your bundle. Um, so this is about uh, reducing bundle size. Let's get back to the bundle size, uh, at the bundle file in our case in Wix. Continue with our investigation, we found out that a big chunk of our code base uh, is actually localization files. Um, actually kind of 20%. Uh, um, before React Native can execute JavaScript code, you need to understand that the code must be loaded into the memory and passed, and we want them to be inside the app. We want all the localization to be in the application, uh, but do we want them to be loaded and passed at the moment the application is uh, open from that state? Um, so no, let's talk about two other optimization we can do for our application. It's RAM bundle and inline require. Um, let's talk about RAM bundle. It's relevant for iOS and in Android if you are not using Hermes yet. A um, little bit context. React Native is still a JavaScript application. Uh, like in the browser, all the JavaScript and modules have to be bundled, combined, minified um, before we deploy. Uh, you drastically reduce the number of files to one file. It's called bundle.js. The whole procedure stay pretty much the same like in the web. Um, but here's the problem. When you app grows, so does the bundle size. And let's say that React Native apps are usually more than a few kilobytes in size. The heavier your app bundle is, uh, the more time it needs to be fully loaded in the memory, parsed, executed, before even showing uh, you the splash screen. Um, however, the difference in that React Native app is executed in a different environment. Uh, on your mobile device one in iOS and Android rendered done on your browser, it allows React Native to be smarter um, and load the memory only what you need. Uh, you can see that um, where, where RAM bundle come into play, it's defined new bundling format that enable on-demand loading of individual app modules, resulting uh, in, in a smaller user experience. Uh, for example, you can see, uh, I try to explain it with this image. Um, in, this, in this picture, you can see that all the components in the green side are divided into different groups, uh, which allow me to load the application much faster because of instead of loading the entire bundle, like in the red picture, you can load only the parts that you really need. Um, so basically, I'm not going to drill in uh, and talk about it too much, but we have three formats. We have the plain, uh, bundle, we have the index RAM bundle, and we have a file RAM bundle. Um, with the standard bundle, not Hermes, you, 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 if you have 50 megabyte uh, bundle, all 50 megabyte must be loaded and parsed before any execution of the files. The optimization behind one bundle is that you can load only portion of the 50 megabyte you can actually need for the startup and progressively load more and more could um, just when this component are winning it. Uh, if, you, if you have large application, you may want to consider run bundle um, run and using inner require that we are going to talk about uh, soon. 
how to do it um, you just need to add uh, for ios in your um, uh, command that you you want to use run bundle in the bundle command and the same in the uh, in the build gradle in android just add the bundle command um, another interesting thing that um, you can use uh, preload modules and uh, now that we have run bundle this overhead of calling a lot of requires when the application uh, um, um, open for the first time require actually need uh, to send a message over the bridge when it's encoded a new model that it's not loaded yet it's basically can impact startup time and uh, because where the largest number of required call likely to take place when they upload um, uh, so preloaded mode uh, uh, modus entry in the config can help us to uh, basically uh, to, to, to define what is the list of whitelist model that you want to load at once instead of one by one it should also improve your startup time that's about run bundle i will continue about the fourth uh, uh, principle it's called inline require so now that we are using run bundle or not uh, the module are loaded one by one um, only when they are when you are asking it in the code so in order to continue with the optimization, we need to require the modules that are only needed. Um, in require is a metro configuration, allow you to delay the requirement of a module or a file until the file is actually needed automatically. Uh, let's take a look at the example. In the global required JS here in the slide, you can see that there is a render function. A uh, render function actually um, have a, a very expensive component very expensive component that is need to need to to be loaded only when the user uh, tap on the on the button. So why don't why should we re uh, require the very expensive component in the global context? Why not only when the user click on the button? So here is a optimization that's actually that's the same like in required do for us automatically. Uh, you can see that it's very expensive is loaded only when the user press on the button uh, so it's delayed the requirement of a model or a file until the file is actually needed it's super important uh, and it's improved the faster uh, the startup time uh, significantly in our case it was an improvement of 20 percent in ios uh, so you should definitely use it if you have a large code base um, how just it's super easy you have a flag that's called in require in your metro config js um, you can read more about it in react native doc performance section it's all there i just feel there is not enough attention to it both for run bundle and in require especially for big application um, moreover beside in require and run bundle you should aim to load your code lazily as possible Inline require is great, uh, but it won't solve all your problem. If you have too much code execution uh, in your application startup, you should consider remove it from there and call it the code later, only when it is necessary. Uh, for example, in our case, we saw that we have a lot of uh, dependency injection logic and when the application load, and most of the code there is not relevant. It can be loaded uh, lazily after or uh, with delay a few seconds after the application completed to load so it's super important to understand what's happened uh, when the application load um, so that's what about in require and run bundle let's continue with five principle and last for this um, uh, um, section um, offline support um, lack of connectivity is not an error condition it's super important for for understand for our users uh, here we are going to talk about two principles load data from your server only when you need it uh, and save it for future use and the second one is don't let the user to wait um, because if you have the data in your cache just show it and update the data afterward um, how to do it uh, if your app requires a large amount of data it's useful to load only what you need um, you should also consider preload or prefetch the data from the server if possible before the user enter to the screen so that when the data is needed the user don't have to wait um, another good example is image caching um, the app downloads the images every time uh, it launched basically which is very much undesired and poor design um, so 
you need to consider cache the images uh, or progressively uh, image load. Uh, consider use uh, um, um, network request data, use a uh, pull to refresh. There are tons of libraries uh, support image cache and progressive image loading. You can, you can use them. You can also use React Native UILib. It's an open source by Wix that support uh, all this uh, kind of caching. And you have a special component for lazy loading of images uh, or progressive load of image. It's super important because you don't want users to wait for the image to load if you can see only part of the image before. Um, so this is about offline support. Let's continue. So we're done with the first part, infrastructure improvements. Let's continue with the second part, code optimization. So here I want to start by talking about, again, the obvious. Um, you're probably really tired of uh, having this, uh, 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 um, but first DOM performance is one of the biggest features of React. It doesn't mean that you get all of this great performance for free. Uh, while React handles a lot of heavy lifting, uh, there are steps that you should definitely conscious take to ensure that your app isn't doing unnecessary work in the render and slowing things down. Uh, one of the biggest steps revolves around making such component render method is called only when it absolutely has to. Uh, so first, we want to improve our screen visibility uh, and time to interaction. Uh, one example is that you can implement your own shoot component update instead of the default one. Uh, you can use your own implementation. Um, you can identify wasted renders. We can see uh, in a few minutes how you can do it with the tools that you have. Uh, consider use uh, pure components. Remember to not always, not by default, because pure component is not always the right thing. Uh, making data immutable, don't use uh, uh, something that is a uh, don't create function in your random function uh, and avoiding passing a new reference for the same old data. Um, we can see later how uh, to identify redundant render in the third part of my talk. Um, super important, it should be in your cheat sheet, first thing to see when you're developing a React Native application. The second one, um, use loading validation. So. Basically, our perspective of time and of or our users is related to many factors, um, including but certainly not limited to our age, location, emotions, and our mood at the specific date. The, the average user perceives that low time, both for web and mobile, are being 50% slower than they actually do. Um, so why not to show the user something and it give him the perspective something is happening. Later, when we call in the experience of the user, they remember that the loading time has been 35% slower. They remember that the application is slow even more than it's actually due. Um, it, it, by specific uh, research, the, the average person believed that he spent nine minutes per day waiting for a slow website and mobile device, uh, mobile application. It's crazy. Um, so, how to do it? Um, you can use um, uh, some visible instant feedback of the application and uh, when to wait for the background response, uh, putting something up during the loading process that you use it, give the user the perception that it's loading quicker. Uh, it can be loader, it can be skeleton, whatever you think it's better. Uh, you can see, for example, that in our Wix application, we are using something that's called data syncer, a uh, component, something like automatic pull to refresh when you enter to the page. And you can use this component as well in React Native UILib, which is basically uh, do the network request in the background and render the screen again when the data received from the, from the server. Um, so use loading validation, skeleton loader, whatever you think it's better. Um, for the third uh, part of uh, this part, um, use native driver. Uh, I hope you heard about it, and I want to uh, um, show and let you understand how important it is. So React Native allow us to easily create a beautiful animation easily using the animated class. However, unless we specify use native driver specifically when starting our animation, all the work is done on the JavaScript thread. This can cause frame drop in our application. Uh, use native driver fix this by passing all the information 
uh, about one animation to your eye thread when it's down, as you can see in the demo, uh, meaning that the bridge is no longer needed during uh, the course of the animation. In short, use native driver makes animation run much faster. Uh, and we can see an example um, uh, how to do it. Just use render drive, uh, use native driver tool in your animated timing. Uh, the drawback of using uh, use native driver is only support things like transform and opacity. For example, we can't use native driver for uh, for an animated value that is used directly on the wrist style of of the view. Uh, but you can consider using React Native reanimated with much better approach than doing animation and transition on the JavaScript side. Um, I wanted to, to, to show you an example uh, by spying the bridge with message queue. If you don't know, you, you can add uh, this piece of code to your, to your development uh, and, and it's going to uh, export a lot of console log, all the traffic on the bridge from the native to JavaScript or uh, from the JavaScript to, to native and give you an example of what's actually happened. And if you want to analyze what's happened with the, uh, without using a uh, native driver, you can see, for example, clicking on a button without using native driver, it's caused a lot of traffic over the bridge, uh, which is redundant because it's not really necessary. We know what is the interpolation that the button should do. And if you want to use a native driver, you can see that uh, we cut the traffic on the bridge to the minimum. Uh, most of the code, most of the logic uh, uh, um, is going to be on the native side and the animation is work much better. Um, so use native driver. Um, for the next part, um, React Native is built on top of the abstraction called bridge. Uh, that's why you need to consider using um, libraries that their implementation is in JavaScript. Um, if possible, prefer libraries native implementation over JavaScript implementation. You should aim for a native experience for the users um, in order to reduce traffic over the bridge. Um, what I'm basically saying is that if you, need, if you need to find the balance uh, between JavaScript and native libraries, think about more traffic following over the bridge means less space for other things. Uh, in the GIF here, I, I, I'm trying to find uh, an, a kind of a library to be a tab controller for iOS and Android. And for quick search in Google, I found tons of libraries that's doing the same. Uh, they have native implementation, JavaScript implementation, but basically only two of them having native, native, native implementation for tabbar. And so you should definitely prefer this kind of libraries instead of JavaScript implementation, because JavaScript implementation mostly have a lot of work over the bridge and it means less space for other things. Let's say you want to load things from the bridge, uh, from async storage, it should be delayed. Uh, to prefer native. Um, another option to reduce traffic over the bridge is to use JSI. Um, at 2018, Facebook introduced React Native new architecture, which also explains the three concepts above, JSI, Fabric, Turbo Module, um, Long story short, the new JavaScript interface, JSI, is another way to pass data between JavaScript and native side. The real benefit of using JSI is uh, um, that the JavaScript and the native side can finally talk to each other, so we not have serialized the JSON message and send it over the bridge, but talk each other directly. Um, having said that, it's not that easy to start and use JSI in your project. As for this time of this talk, um, JSI is mostly stable, but it still needs some improvement before uh, production ready, and it's not well documented. Uh, you can see that there are common libraries in the community, like Reanimated, that I mentioned before, uh, that uh, have uh, an alpha version using JSI and Turbo models, which uh, should bring a, a massive improvements to the animation and also React Native Navigation that use JSI and Turbo Model in order to have a, a slick uh, transition between screens. Um, JSI should reduce traffic over the bridge and have much faster interaction. Consider using it. Um, it's a great opportunity to ask Facebook team to help us uh, use JSI with better resources and example and document uh, 
but basically you can start discovering the benefit of JSI and maybe improve your app performance. Um, so until now we kind of done with the optimization improvement uh, ideas. Let's continue with some tools and monitoring. Um, so we can start by talking about how to catch performance issue. I build a developer happiness scale for understanding uh, how you find the performance issue and when. Uh, so it can be in development, uh, in pull request, uh, on QA before you release the version, uh, only in production when you have monitoring. And the, 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 the third one is when the user complain about any performance issue that the application is super slow. Uh, all of my tools that I'm going to show, it's related mostly to the development uh, stage or pull request when you can build an automated build to run these tools and get result and block the merge button in the pull request. Um, even if it looks like uh, you want to catch all the issue in development, it's not always possible. Remember what I said, you want to have experience, good experience for the users, not on, only on your device. Um, I believe that we, you need to add an APM, application performance monitoring uh, system to your application. Uh, there are a lot of companies that provide APM management tools such as New Relic, AppDynamic, Flurry, Hockey App. Um, it monitors the production uh, uh, performance and gives you the understanding of what's happening on your user devices. Um, so let's start from the first one that we're already, uh, already familiar with. It's React Native Bundle Visualizer. Install it on your uh, environment and uh, from time to time drill in and understand what's happened inside your bundle. The second one is Flipper. Uh, Flipper basically is the one of the best tools out there uh, to debug and analyze your uh, React Native application. Uh, the real advantage of Flipper is the ability to extend it with your own plugins or download plugin from the community. Here at the bottom, you can see an example of a great plugin uh, called Flipper React Native Performance uh, that's analyzed your startup performance, split it to smaller part to better understand what's going on under the hood. Uh, Flipper can give you an uh, understanding of uh, with device logs, crash report, network requests, uh, to understand what what's you save in your local database, um, even expect, inspect cache resources and images and understand if the application cache properly. Uh, and you can extend Flipper, as I said, with your own plugin. Uh, we choose to implement our own internal plugin in Wix uh, for Flipper that's uh, exposing the bug mode state of the logged in user and some in other interesting internal uh, um, um, uh, objects. Um, um, in our case, it really helped all the developer install Flipper on their environment and easily understand what's going on when they're, they're, they're working. So you should definitely use Flipper. Um, the second one is React DevTools. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you can use it uh, integrated into Flipper or with uh, Chrome. Um, just npm install React DevTools. You, it's great for identify performance bottleneck in your uh, um, in your application render, identify wasteful render, uh, profile render performance. Um, the, the 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 real benefit uh, um, of React DevTools is uh, uh, the to analyze render timing. Um, it's worth to mention that currently it doesn't support uh, fully in Hermes, but the great guys from the community and and from Facebook are working on solution, so it's going to be available soon. Um, the real benefits of React DevTools, I try to say, it's the flame graph. Uh, it's kind of, I call it the render shaming. Um, the flame graph is the default profile view that's help you to visualize the view on beautiful view, the render tree, uh, and understand how to improve it. Um, you can identify a render that take too much and act like a, a bottleneck. Uh, this, for example, is a kind of a, a view, the, the, the main view in Wix that we analyzed before, and we saw that uh, uh, you can see that your list item are render instead of only the top of the list. Uh, it's render all the list, so you can improve it. Uh, I don't really have enough time, and I hope that Parashuram, also talking in this uh, um, conference, uh, will cover how to use React DevTools in his talk. Um, what I can definitely say is that React DevTools should be always open when you are debugging performance issue uh, on your device. 
uh, student export react native perf logger um, this library is created by by myself to enable production management on your react native application in the first phase based on parachute log i try to measure the duration of their startup time split it to smaller part uh, to get duration of the native modules in actualization first time drawing and time to, to action completed um, the benefit of this library is that it's export a, a, a new json with all the full reports of what loaded on your startup time and it should actually report it to the server and to get understand what's happening in production. In our case, we report this JSON to the server uh, for smaller percent of our user base and to visualize all the data with Grafana dashboard. It allows the Google get full picture of uh, how the uh, startup time is split in the user uh, devices. Uh, we can filter it by platform, iOS and Android, device type, it's, we can filter by Xiaomi and iPhone 6 and see the difference between the devices. We can even differentiate between app version to identify issue in specific version that we released. Uh, moreover, thanks to this tool, we are able to measure the application time to interaction and other factor in our pull request system in GitHub. So we want to make sure that for each pull request, we didn't hurt the startup time. And uh, so we have um, a step for each pull request that's export this kind of uh, measurement between the current master and, uh, uh, and the pull request and see if there is any degradation. And if there is, we kind of block the pull request to understand what's happened. If you accidentally add a code that cause uh, an issue with the startup time. Uh, so you can use it, React Native Perf Logger is currently a support on the Android, but iOS support is on the way. Another tool by Wix uh, is Detox Instruments. It's fully open source. Uh, and Detox Instruments will help you to analyze required tree, um, CPU and memory usage with a great uh, view, disk activity, network activity. The real benefit of Dix Detox Instruments is that you can use your own events. If you want to, to, to measure specific interaction, you can add start and end and to use Detox and see it uh, or visualization. Um, you can investigate uh, and you ASIC storage and bridge, see what's happening over the bridge, super uh, beneficial. Um, and almost the last one uh, is, is my favorite one. It's called Why Did You Render? Uh, Why Did You Render is a small, tiny library that mon monkey page react itself and tell you when, uh, uh, how to avoid render that is uh, redundant. Uh, you can see an example that it actually say uh, you have render that's uh, happened uh, more than once because uh, props change, uh, because prop object itself change, but its value is all equal. So it gives you the understand and help you to understand what's happened and why the render is happening. Um, uh, it's it's notify you about avoidable re-render. You should definitely use it. Uh, and I, I don't have time. So for the last one, console log because it's, uh, why not? Uh, we all love to spam our uh, console with a lot of logs. It's super easy to use, start and, and understand what's happening in your code. Just remember to remove them in production because it can affect production. Um, so we reached to the end. Uh, I hope you got some interesting insight about how to improve your React Native application performance. Always remember that performance does matter and you should invest time to improve your app. It affects your revenue and as a result, lose money. Um, and don't blame it on React Native because it's most of the time our fault. So thank you to me. If you have any question, uh, you can send me a message on Twitter and I will try to help. Bye bye.